Welcome to today's Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray, serving here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center in Cheshire, Connecticut. Today, our devotion continues in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 6. At this point, David has received a prophetic word that he is to stay in Judah. As a consequence, he is immediately discovered by Saul and his men. Saul is quite stirred up because of his insecurity and his fears. He begins to challenge those who are around him. And he says in verse 8, For all of you have conspired against me, so that there is no one who discloses to me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you who is sorry for me or discloses to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in ambush as it is this day. Now, almost everything that Saul says here is totally incorrect. His perception is completely off. You see, insecurity leads to misperception. But then that misperception eventually leads to manipulation, and manipulation will lead to a disaster. It does not benefit the people of God at all. All Saul is really concerned about here is securing his own position. And nobody says anything, but there's a man named Doeg the Edomite. And it says in verse 9, Then Doeg the Edomite, who was standing by the servants of Saul, said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitahitu. And he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him provisions and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Now, you see, we might think, well, Doeg might be trying to help out the king here, but in reality, he's not concerned about the nation. He's not concerned about Saul. He's an opportunist. And he sees that Saul, Saul's perception of the thing is so incorrect, but it's going to result in an advantage for him. As a consequence, Saul requires that the men of Ahimelech and of Nob will come and stand before him. And as they stand before him, Saul challenges them and said, Why have you, the son of Jesse, conspired against me in that you have given him bread and a sword and have inquired of God for him, so that he would rise up against me by lying in ambush as it is this day? Now, you would think at this point that Saul would be open to some reasoning, to some arguments, but Saul is not. Because of his insecurity, his perception, though greatly flawed, is going to stay in his mind. Listen to how Ahimelech responds in verse 14. Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who among all your servants is as faithful as David? Even the king's son-in-law, who is captain over your bodyguard and is honored in your house. Did I just begin to inquire of God for him today? Far be it from me. Do not let the king impute anything to his servants or to any of his household of my father, for your servants know nothing at all of this whole affair. The reason that Ahimelech did not know of the affair is because there really wasn't an affair here. There was no conspiracy. There was no uprising against Saul at all. But Saul has it fixed in his mind because of his insecurity, because of his fear, and because of his paranoia. And so he commands his guards and those that are his serving close by him to put to death all of the priests, but they refuse to. But Doeg the Edomite was willing to go that step further because he was not himself really an Israelite, nor was he concerned about the Israelites. So he killed 85 priests that day. He killed men, women, children, even the infants. He even took out the life of the oxen, the donkeys, the sheep, and all of these things because they were the support system. And as a consequence of this deception that David had entered into, there was a great loss of life. But the thing I want you to see here is the insecurity always produces a false perception which leads to manipulation and then irrational behavior. Our irrational behavior will never be rectified unless we remain humble before God and willing to receive correction. But if we're rooted in insecurity and fear, it will destroy us. Let me pray with you about this. Father, we thank you today that we don't have to live in fear and insecurity because we have a God, we have a Father who loves us deeply. Lord, let us be like David who rests in your care. 
We pray, Father, that we would not become like Saul, that we would not be, Lord, uh, paranoid or insecure, leading to all of these awful things and tragedies that occurred. Help us, Lord, to honor you in faith. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you for listening to today's Pastor's Perspective. We pray that you have a great day and that you'll live in faith and not in fear.